Your job is to play video games. You get $150 a hour, but you can only choose one game. Which, according to my Steam activity, Grim Dawn. According to my brain, something open-ended with lots of mod potential. So Skyrim. According to my heart, Kotor. I'm a big fan of your body parts, so, thanks. They're not for sale. Desert bus, obviously. Don't even joke about that. For those that don't get the reference, like me, Desert Bus, the very worst video game ever created. An MMO of any kind really, amount of content available would make it an easy choice. This makes the most sense honestly, MMOs are always going to be the biggest time sinks in the gaming industry, and there's often people who just hang out in MMOs like it's a town square social gathering. Hell. I could spend hours just sprinting around a town in Ezo on a mount while waiting for a dungeon queue or while talking in text chat. I literally idle around in FFXIV. Probably one stroke three of my time in game has just been hopping around housing. Old shul rune escape. I'd already have over a million dollars just from wow at this rate. Eve. Online. If I'm going to be paid to play only one game. I want it to feel like work. If it helps. I am a caldery miner with a focus on Veldspa. I mine in BFE and haul the refined goods 40 minutes away to Juta. I've always known that if I ever play a minute of EVE I'd be screwed in my real life. You just described the kind of thing I'd spend years doing for no reason I could explain to my wife and other family members. I played my free 2 week trial back in high school. I said this is the perfect game. It's literally everything that I want in a video game. So I uninstalled it. I had the presence of mind to recognize that if I actually played it, I would willingly and eagerly let it consume my life to the point of destruction. A friend of mine went a different way with it. He was between jobs and so was running the corp the social group had. After a certain point he realized he was putting in 40 hours a week just running things from an admin standpoint. He was preparing weekly meetings with little folios for everyone showing their current operations, growths, shortfalls projections, business plans for additional growth, etc. So he said F it, why don't I try running my own company? So he went and started a company for helping small businesses shift their website services to cloud-based platforms, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, etc. And now makes bank doing that. F it, Factorio. Factorio is already work, might as well get paid for it. The factory is not growing, go back to work. Yeah, I realized a while ago that all the games I've played excessively are like that. Automation is your primary directive. All I see is conveyor belts in my dreams. The factory must grow. Yep. Imagine what you could get done doing solid 8 hour days. RF. I need more iron. I need to boot it up again and try 1x. But I can't spare the time. Tabletop Simulator. Thousands and thousands of board games and a constantly updated workshop and the ability to create your own board games. Yeah that would be my absolute dream job. This might top Minecraft honestly. You can play Minecraft by yourself though. Is there much you can do with TTS without having friends to play with? Rimworld. You would become a millionaire and still not fully grasp the game. I think I would chose the same. I scrolled so far to find this. Rimworld has already taken hundreds of hours of my life and I haven't even had a colony reach the ship yet lol. Maybe I'll go back and undo a vanilla game to completion. Or maybe I'll download a few new mods and forget about my last game. The Sims. It's got 20 years of material to bank on. It's open ended. And they are always making new stuff for it. And at that salary, I could afford to have all the packs and DLC. Nice. With that salary you could actually afford an entire EA game. That's probably a good answer for the long term. I get bored of playing The Sims after a while but I always come back to it. For the past 20 years, there's always mods also. RuneScape. Could literally be a millionaire off of RuneScape. Why was RuneScape so low? Now that it's on Steam I gave it a try after like 10 years and 2 weeks later I bought membership for a year. For $150 an hour. You pick. I'm pretty much open at that price. I think a better question would be list the games you wouldn't play for $150 an hour. Atari ET. I give you maybe a week before you decide to get an office job. Lol. I logged some hours in that bad boy myself. Don't remember much of it now though. Just that long necked affair levitating out of a pit at one point. For $150 US dollars an hour. 
I'll make my monthly salary in a day. I'll play a fine watch paint dry for that money. I know. Like seriously? $150 is about how much I make a day. All I would have to do is play an Ishtai game for 2 hours a day. 5 days a week. $150 x 2 hours x 5 days x 52 weeks $78,000 a year. I will do just about anything to only work 2 hours a day to double my salary. 4 hours a day, and quadruple my pay, f yeah I will do that in a heartbeat. City Skylines. Game has infinite replayability. This needs to be higher. Brilliant game. Really one of the best of its genre. This is the perfect game. Casual, relaxing, pause whenever you want. Play with a sandwich in one hand. Playable offline. Has a bazillion mods. I'm not so sure on the relaxing aspect when you've fudged your traffic system and now have dead bodies everywhere. Minecraft. You have multiplayer, single player, huge servers, mini games, mods, every previous version, free continuous updates, survival, creative. It's a versatile game. If only I could get a back payment for all the hours I've already played. Same. I had been playing in survival and hardcore for about 6 years. Until this summer, when I decided give Hypixel and some other servers a shot. Turns out there's so much to do there. PvP, mini games, new skills to learn, and of course, Hypixel Skyblock, which feels like a separate game itself. World of Warcraft, can it be retroactive? Somebody owes me $425,600 and 2 years of my life back. 2837 hours or 118 days. If I had been paid $150 per hour for playing World of Warcraft, I'd be comfortably retired now, 100%. Even with struggling in Shadowlands, I would choose this. Stellaris. Civilization VI. Anyone who has played any of those games can tell you that one hour quickly turns into three days playing that game. Sid Meier's Why Is It Light Outside? Sid Meier's Why Do I Hear Birds In The Middle Of The Negosh? 8 p.m. get on to play a few minutes. 10 p.m. I'll save and quit as soon as I get these settlers out. 12 a.m. I'm at turn 223. I'll quit when I'm at turn 225. 1.30 a.m. I hear my wife banging on the floor since I'm still up. F it. I'll call Alexander and then go to bed. 3 a.m. WTF. It's 3 a.m. Save. Close. First time I played Civ V. I did exactly that. Complete research. Build a new tech, then I'll quit, I swear. But then when the new tech was done being built, the next research was almost done. Next thing I know, the sun was coming up through my window. I look at the clock and I have to be to work in an hour and a half. I uninstalled the game and have never played again. Does Club Penguin count? Yes gamers unite. For $150 an hour? Literally any game you want me to. Flappy Bird. I think this would actually be considered torture in some places. Rocket League. Same. And I'll stay in gold eye until I die. Warframe. I would just make a new account for the job and because I have plenty of time now I would just chill and enjoy the ride and not grind as hard it's ironic how I would just take it easy when I get paid for it. But usually I'm a grind freak. Well you're getting paid hourly in this case so the carrot is now dangling from the other side lol. But with the crafting times in that foundry, that'd easily last you quite a while just on that MR grind alone. Escape from Tarkov. Ah. A fellow sadist. A. Effort. The Binding of Isaac. I burn out easy. But Isaac? Just don't get tired of it for some reason. Are you NL? Stardew Valley. Most mentally healthy game I've ever played. I really need to try this game. Doesn't seem like something I'd usually play but I constantly hear nothing but good things about it. I only play a few different kinds of video games. RTSs, FPSs, MOBAs. But every so often I dip my toes into another genre with a game that's supposedly the best of the best in another genre. Loz, WW, Super Mario Odyssey, Portal, Innercraft, Hollow Knight. Stardew Valley is a great example of this. Farming sims aren't my cup of tea. But I know a good cup of tea when I drink it. Not into farming games or games that have a lot of dialogue myself. But I can tell you I thoroughly enjoyed that game. You really get invested into your farm and the townspeople. I highly recommend it. I absolutely love this game but I ruined it for myself by trying to min-max my time management. Don't do this kids. 
stop and smell the roses. I know it sounds stupid to say, but I burnt myself out by min-maxing Stardew. Farmland as big as possible, always high yield, repeatable, crops, spend the entire day watering barely have enough time to harvest, plant water in one day, just to do it all again day after day. I lasted around 100 hours in that game, no friendships, low skill levels, barely any achievements but I had a buttload of gold, whereas my girlfriend is pushing 600 hours in her game with a little, manageable farm, lots of animals, friendship through the roof, married, max level all skills and smashing every quest achievement, just goes to show you can play stardew any which way you want just don't screw yourself over by working too hard, metaphor for life really, lol, I can smell the roses next year. This year I need to set up an infrastructure. Halo 3 or Rainbow Six Siege. I feel like picking the Master Chief Collection would be better because it gives you every game minus Halo 5. Minecraft. I've never even played Minecraft and I know the obvious answer is Minecraft. About a month ago I got back into Minecraft. I've played since beta and played it heavily in 2014-15. Since then I hadn't gone back. After going back I've sunk in probably around 60 hours in this month which is a lot for me since I'm a student. Forgot how good that game is and I had to learn lots of new stuff since updates have come that I'm unaware of. I'll do you one better PC Minecraft Java edition so you can switch in mods. Basic Minecraft not good enough. Try a Skyblock there's half a dozen good ones from Agrarian Skies to Skyblock 4. Or the reverse and get a stone block to run there. And if none of those build your way up with mods games interest you why not just try one of the various Pokemon mods got to catch them all and with modded PC Minecraft that could literally be all Pokemon there's two flavors to choose from. And don't forget questing exploration and survival mod stuff like Stranded or Dimensions mod or Invasion I think is the name. I mean I may have almost a thousand hours in 7 days to die but in Minecraft I probably have closer to 3000 hours I've been playing of Minecraft since I've purchased a beta key all those years ago. Before the nether was a thing, if you know how to use redstone correctly you can do just about anything in Minecraft. Even play other games. I've played League for 6 years coming up on 7 almost every day. Why stop now? Except now it has meaning. I get why people are choosing games that they love. But it's supposed to be a job. I would choose Overwatch or League of Legends. Completely infuriating bullsh games that for some goddamn reason you can't stop playing. Games like GTA, Skyrim, and WoW are fun games and have hours and hours of fun with replayability. I would certainly pick one of them because it wouldn't feel like work to explore the stuff I never got around to before. That's completely fair. But what length of time are we talking here? Is this like a summer job? Or is it supposed to span a career? In the short term. I love games like you mentioned. But I just could never bring myself to keep replaying them 9 to 5. 5 days a week like a job. That's almost 200 hours a month. I imagine eventually you get to all the stuff you never got around to doing. But hey. To each their own. I can never bring myself to replay an open world game more than twice, but I've had to swear off online competitive games as an entire category because it's too addictive for me. Animal Crossing. Time doesn't exist when I'm playing. Genuine question. What do you even do in that game? Talk with NPCs all day? You try to create your perfect town city. In the newest editions case an island. There is a lot of talking with NPCs especially if you are interested and like the villagers you have. In the newest game it's a lot more time consuming because you can terraform. Which is pretty awesome to Animal Crossing veterans. There is also interior house designing and decorating outside of homes so there is a lot to do lol. Sea of Thieves. It just feels like home to me at this point. The toxic sheds. The wholesome kiddos potentially experiencing a sense of adventure for the first time. The goofy a folks that actually are peers pirates. The drunken folks belting out shanty lyrics. The pvp sweet lords. I love it all. And take them all in stride. But most of all I love the booty. I bought it two days ago. But only got to really experience it last night. Legendary pirate and his crew hunted me down and killed me. Five minutes later they came upon me again. But spoke to me instead. They were really sorry for ruining my experience. As I was trying to learn the map, they allied with me. And I ended up getting like 60k gold in the next hour. Lots of fun. And lots still to learn. Tabletop Simulator. 
I could do everything from board games with friends to TTRPGs. I wouldn't have to really worry about anything getting stale. I can play other games in my own time. So it's just this one is my day job right? In that case, Red Dead Redemption 2. I can easily find novel things to do in Red Dead. And if not, I can find work like things to take some job satisfaction out of. I'd play Pokemon Go every day. I'd play Pokemon Go. When you wake, would you grab your phone? Skyrim. Depends. Does modding it for hours upon hours count as playing it? Path of Exile. That game's like crack to me. I recommend you stay away if you have an addictive personality. CSGO. I play it all the time anyway. GTA V. Just with loading screens you are making $450. Red Dead Redemption 2. Probably Destiny. It's not my favorite game. But there's enough to do in it. And enough is added regularly that it'd be fine for a while. At least. Having that be a 9-5 job would be $300,000 a year. I could do that. Red Dead 2 with attempting to do a 100% completion rate. Breath of the Wild, or Minecraft. 